Yo, 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 people and patrons of the night, it is your boy, The Horrorlander, and today I'm going to be talking about a pretty infamous episode of Goosebumps from Season 3, and uh, infamous for certain reasons. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Yeah, if you know, you know, and by the end of this review, I'm pretty sure that all of you guys are going to know. Although I can say that my thoughts about the episode have changed a little bit to when I first watched it. Um, not drastically, you know, not, not nothing too drastic, like a full 180, but maybe like a 20, 30, 30 degree change, you know, I've been a little bit less harsh towards this episode as I used to be because there are some positives to it. There are some things that are pretty memorable and I do like, um, but that being said, there are going to be some extremely funny things that I can't wait to talk about. So without further ado, let's talk about the season three episode of Goosebumps known as Teacher's Pet. That's right. Now, before we get into it, obviously there is the big elephant in the room that I will um, address the actress who plays the main character, Becca, uh, Michelle R. She unfortunately had passed away at the age of 16 due to, I believe, meningitis. Um, so my condolences go out to her family, obviously prayers to them. Um, it's been a while now, but nonetheless, I send my prayers. I hope that they're doing well and obviously prayers up to Michelle um, as she's in a higher place. Um, and also Richard McMillan is in this episode who you will recognize from other episodes of kids horror that he's done such as uh, Say Cheese and Die and uh, The Tale of the Curious Camera from Are You Afraid of the Dark. He unfortunately passed away as well. So condolences to his family and um, prayers up to him as well. Now, now that that's out of the way, let's get into the episode review. So this episode opens up with two main characters. Uh, you've got the main protagonist, Becca, and then you've got the uh, friend character of her named Benji. They're out on a school field trip to this kind of nature preserve, woods area, where they're gonna be, I guess, recording like biological species, AKA checking out the food chain, seeing what type of animals are in uh, this forest, kind of how the food chain works. And they're being obviously accompanied by their main teacher and this, I believe, like science teacher um, named Mr. Blankenship. Um, and as they're out there basically exploring the woods, you know, you can tell all the kids are very excited. One of the girls who's like a side character in the episode, she actually is the main protagonist from the best Are You Afraid of the Dark episode. One of the best Are You Afraid of the Dark episodes, in my opinion, from season six the tale of the secret admirer so i'll show a clip of her and then i'll show a clip of her from secret admirer but mrs crandall back at <laughs> so shout out to her she's in this episode pretty cool um she plays a side character role so you don't get to see her acting chops or get that much involvement with her but nonetheless go check her out in tale of the secret admirer she is muy bien muy bien muy bien Muy bien. You already know, bro. But that aside, as they're in the woods, basically checking out all these different animals, Becca happens to stumble upon this, you know, white rabbit, and she thinks it's so cute. She wants to pick it up, maybe write down some notes, study it. And as she picks it up, she sees a, um, a, a horrific sight. And unfortunately, she's not the only one seeing the horrific sight. The viewers are subject to it as well. It looked like she had never seen anything quite so horrible in all her life. Um, it is a rabbit with a poorly, poorly, poorly visual visual effect involving a lizard face over its actual face. Um, so she sees basically a hybrid. She sees this uh, reptile bunny and it freaks her out. It scares her. I'm not gonna lie. I got pretty jump scared by that alone. That was a pretty scary sight. But she ends up throwing it away. She ends up trying to convince, you know, her friend Benji. She ends up trying to convince the other kids like, yo, I saw this uh, weird rabbit. It had the face of a lizard. It's this hybrid thing. You know, you got to believe me, typical stuff. And of course, what do you think happens? I'm going to give you five seconds to try to guess what happens. Yeah, they don't believe her. Clearly, they don't believe her. They don't believe that there's some animal hybrid. Yo, these airplanes, bro. I swear to God. Yo, yo. Yeah, bro. Oh, you lucky. You lucky that sun is blocking my eye. You lucky that sun is so bright. I can't spot that airplane. Otherwise, bro, 
I'm just saying, man, you know, I don't encourage violence, but my name is the Horrorlander, and uh, you know what happened the last time the Homelander was near an airplane. Actually, in fact, both times he was near an airplane. You know what happened. I'm <laughs> By the way, me and the airplane vendetta aside, they obviously don't believe her about this killer rabbit, and then they just sort of brush it off. And then you get introduced more to Mr. Blankenship, the science teacher of the group, and he is a very uh, unique character. Obviously, he's played by the great Richard McMillan. Um, he played Spidey from Save Cheese and Die's episode. He played the photographer from Tale of the Curious Camera. Amazing actor, and in this episode, he's a really good actor. He's, he plays a good villain throughout this episode. Um, and he's a very odd character. You know, he keeps his giant, um, like, aquarium, empty terrarium tank with a, uh, I think, a ball python. And he ends up taking out a white mouse and then tries to teach the kids about the food chain. And he ends up putting that white mouse on the ground, puts the ball python, and lets the ball python chase the rat, uh, the mouse, and basically eat it alive. Yeah, yeah. So kids get to see uh, the natural way of life. Instead of the birds and the bees, you got the ball pythons and the mice. Yeah, yeah, quite the different um, mature talk. But hey, hey, they figured out how life worked right then and there, right? Kids grow up fast. So obviously they're a little bit weirded out by Mr. Blankenship. Next thing you know, they start breaking off into pairs again and trying to see what different specimens they can find. Becca is still a little bit rattled about her previous encounter, but she pushes on nonetheless. And eventually they find this old wooden cabin um, out in the woods. And this old wooden cabin, as they get into it, um, it is a really weird place. It turns out to be a laboratory with all these weird creatures inside, inside, inside of jars and beakers. Um, so right away, they're very weirded out by what could be going on here. And they see that, you know, later on, they see that they're like animal hybrids. Like they're not just normal. They're things called like owl monkeys and, you know, squirrel turtles, like all these weird labels on it. And they're very, you know, just sort of, they're creeped out by this whole thing. And when they leave, uh, Becca starts having nightmares that night. She has nightmares about this uh, python crawling over her sleeping bag, about seeing tarantulas, about seeing that reptile bunny again. You know, that reptile bunny's getting all the screen time. Milk in that fame. Uh, Get the fuck off my screen! Um, and then when they return back to the laboratory, you find out a secret. You find out a secret about what exactly is going on in the laboratory, what type of experiments are being held, and uh, you find out the potential origin of a certain character, a certain character in the story who is perceived to be sus. Uh, they are, well, what, 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 what a shocking twist of events. The character that you thought was sus actually turns out to be sus. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's basically the reveal. You find out some characters involved with the laboratory. There is some heinous atrocities going on behind the scenes. And now the kids are unfortunately roped into it. And that's essentially Teacher's Pet. Without me giving too much away, you can watch the rest of the episode and find out. So what do I think about this episode? I used to be extremely harsh on this episode. I used to say it was the worst episode in the entire Goosebumps show. And upon the rewatch, while it's still bad, you know, there are bad visual effects. It's you got that wrong. Magical. Oh, magic. Story is a little bit messy. Just feels like kind of go-go gadget random shit at certain times. Um, it is adapting a tale story. And I do commend the fact that they did not directly adapt the school setting in the uh, teacher's pet short story. Honestly, that short story would have made it to my back to school arc. This is a school field trip. Um, in the woods, but since it still involves teacher and a class, I'm still going to put it in my back to school arc playlist. Um, they had to adapt it in a different way so that way they could fit the 20 minute screen time because obviously uh, the Tales to Give You Goosebumps series, all the short stories are extremely short. So it'd be very hard to adapt that into full episodes. Uh, they manage with what they got. So with that being said, you know, I thought that that was a valiant attempt at them trying to flesh out the story, doing a scary, you know, tale in the woods kind of episode. And, you know, although the visual effects are absolutely horrible, the visual effects in this episode are about as atrocious as atrocious can get. 
um, the plot itself is not necessarily bad. You know, I, I like the reveal about all these weird, disgusting creatures and heinous things that are happening in this laboratory, this wooden shack out in the woods. Kind of reminds you of the uh, hermit's cabin in Fever Swamp. You know, I like that. It, it, it is pretty creepy. It is pretty unnerving for what it is. Um, and I like Mr. Blankenship's character. Um, you know, Richard McMillan plays a good character the way he plays this sort of ominous role, this creepy role. He does a good job. Either way, he does a pretty good job. He plays a good creepy role. He plays a good ominous role. Um, really good actor, Richard McMillan. So I like him in this episode. There's really no bad acting at all in this episode. Even uh, Becca and Benji, um, they're pretty good actors. Like they're not they're not the best actors, obviously. You know, they're not the standout talent, but they're pretty decent in terms of acting for kids. And uh, pretty much all the other side characters are fine as well. So I don't really got any problem with the acting. I don't really got much problems with the concept and the uh, actual villain involving some. Uh, some snakes, sleepy, sleepy, slithery snake stuff. Uh, the snake stuff I thought was pretty cool. You know, I, for me personally, I am a fan of snakes. I do got a little bit of a bias. I am, I am a snake head. It's a man cub, a delicious man cub. Um, not the fish. Overall, I'd probably give this episode like a five out of 10. You know, I used to be a lot harsher on it. I used to give it like three out of 10. Um, but there are benefits to it. There are positives to this episode. So as I've rewatched it, I've actually kind of liked it a little bit more. Now, I can't say that I drastically changed my opinion. I don't full on love it or like it. This is still a bad, kind of bad episode. You know, again, the visual effects are very poor. The way the plot kind of fleshes out is still a little bit sloppy. But that being said, there are positives to it. And with that, um, I can say this actually does have some rewatchability. You know, this is not like the worst thing that I wouldn't want to rewatch like Deep Trouble 2 or well, I say Deep Trouble 2, Deep Troubles episode and uh, My Hairiest Adventure. Those are flat out just, yeah. But Teacher's Pet, I don't know, kind of bad. It, it qualifies as kind of bad, but some part of me likes some of the stuff in it. And that's really all I got. So yeah, I give it a five out of 10. This is a, um, it's a middle of the road, kind of bad, but has some positive episode. And I suggest all of you guys go watch it. It's free on YouTube. Um, if you have the DVD for Teach, I don't know if Teacher's Pet came out on a DVD, but if it did, or VHS, go check it out. Um, and also, uh, if you have uh, YouTube, you just go watch Teacher's Pet episode for free. So go check it out. Let me know your thoughts down below. How do you feel about the episode? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you dislike it? Do you hate it? Let me know all those things. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Now I do got a little bit of a heads up. Uh, my school semester for college is gonna be starting and it's gonna be very busy. I actually started in like a couple of days. So I will not be able to upload as frequently as I've been during this summer. So just a little statement, you know, if any of you guys are you know, looking forward to more content, just be very patient with me. And uh, I have a lot of videos that I uploaded throughout the summer. So go check it out. I got a bunch of different horror movie reviews, book reviews, episode reviews. And obviously this entire month of August, I did a uh, seven video back to school um, kids horror adventure. So you guys can check that all out. Um, down on my YouTube channel. Just click the playlist, see all the summer uploads I did, and enjoy that. And then uh, I'll upload videos whenever I can throughout my school semester. I'll see what I can do for you guys. But thank you so much for being very patient with me. And if you made it to the end of the video, please hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and hit that post notification bell. Those are all easy and free ways to support me and lets me know you guys enjoy the content. Um, also lets me know what type of future content you guys want to see. And I hope all of you guys have a blessed day. Uh, this was brought to you by Brot Studios, aka Brokebot Studios. It's your boy, the Horror Lander, your number one favorite horror hero. And I am peacing out. Wish me luck in college. And I wish you guys luck in anything going on in your lives. Deuces. See you out that door, baby. Bye, bye, bye.